was when I was in front of the fire playing with my little brother and it was like his hand merged into mine and mine into his and it, both hands just all sparkled and that was the time the angel said I must keep it a secret and that they were angels and they said my little brother was a soul I didn't know he had died because I was only two and a half I was playing with him it was normal for for me and it was when I was about maybe five years of age as well the angel said that God wants to teach me something else as well and that's to see love in a physical form and love comes from the soul and it was when I was sitting at the table with my mum and dad and my brothers and sisters and there was a cake and my dad was starting to cut the cake and the angel beside me said Lorna pay pay attention you know because I was only five roughly and I could see the only way I could I can describe a a clear appearance of it is is that this love and you have to remember it comes from the soul it came from my father and it was like a mist but clear crystal clear and it seemed to sparkle you know the way ice would if the sun was shining on it and it just kind of you know wafered out like this and then the angel said to me look at my mom and I looked at my mom and she was you know two or three feet away from my dad and I saw the same happening to her and I saw this mist from both of them meeting and intertwining and I was told that was love coming from their soul love for each other and I remember looking at my mum and dad's face, you know, glancing from one to the other. And I could even sit, because it came from every single part of them. And since that day, I've been able to see love physically. How do you explain that to people? Though? It's it's actually very, very hard. I, I don't know why God has chosen me, you know, because I'm only an ordinary person. And I'm dyslexic, if I'm pronouncing that right. So... You know, my parents and the doctor, you know, said I was retarded because I couldn't learn to read or write, you know, and going left or right confused me altogether. You know, even reading the clock was a huge, huge problem. But the angels have taught me everything I know, and I'm so glad I kept it a secret because I wouldn't be here talking to you. How do you cope with people who might be listening to this today who say, you just don't believe it, flat, don't believe this, How can you be talking to angels? This is nonsense. Uh, And they don't believe it. Well, I have to smile at the angels behind you. Never mind your guardian angel. Um, Kind of laughing at me when you ask that question. Um, Because it doesn't matter. You know, when you can help even one person in the world, that's all that matters. It doesn't matter who ridicules or laughs at me. I see angels physically. I know they're real. They always have loads of questions to ask those that are cynical. You know, and sometimes I smile because an angel, you know, their angel might say, Lorna, you know, they're hungry and thirsty to know more. They want to know that they have a soul and a guardian angel and that they're not going to just die and rot away in the ground and there's nothing more. You live because you have a soul. And what's the most common question that people ask you? Um, People of all religions would ask me, you know, do they have a guardian angel? You know, that that is one of the most common and every single human being. I have never seen anyone without a guardian angel. And is the guardian angel that you have, for example, is my guardian angel, would it be someone who's related to me? Or is it just, that's the bit that I find, I would like to think my guardian angel was my granny or my grandfather or mother or father, someone who's passed away who's who's looking after me. I I know. The idea that it's a kind of a random person well, is it's, strange it's, to it's, me. It's, it's not. Angels are creatures created by God. Your guardian angel, when you were in heaven, your your soul is that little speck of light of God and, and yet your human body fills every part of you. But when you're conceived and meant to be born, um, whether you, you live or die in, in that way, um, your guardian angel comes with you. So your guardian angel is not a random But you have to remember, you know, your guardian angel loves you unconditionally. And every angel loves to be around us because of our soul, because our soul is that speck of light of God. Do you ever wonder, why me? Why Lorna Byrne? I do, um, because I often say, say that to myself and I have asked God and the angels and the answer I have been given back is, why not you? I actually don't know. I don't know why God didn't choose someone that had brains to burn 
that, you know, could be the president of America or, or someone, you know, in a powerful place to do more. And Have you been shown th- your future, your own future or futures? Um, I was told a lot in the sense of that when I would write the first book that it would be a bestseller, that I would travel the world, that, you know, I'd give loads of talks to people of all faiths and none, um, that I would do loads more. And I actually never think about it. I just do it. That's the only way I can. So I, I, I don't I don't think about it in that in but, that way. But in terms of your daily life, in terms of your own children, have do they you told want me to know more about their lives or definitely about how they'll not. get on? And, no? Definitely not. No, I, I Is don't. that not the first thing you'd want to know? No, because as a child of the age of ten, um, the angel Elijah told me about the man I would marry, my hus- husband, and told me, you know, we'd be happy, we'd have children, we'd have ups and downs, but then told me he would become ill and we wouldn't grow old together. You know, so since that day, I really don't want to know. I would you rather were 10 not. at that stage? And I was only 10. Like, I gave out, but the angel and I just said, it'll be put to the back of your mind. But even though they put it to the back of my mind, I was still very conscious of it. So, on, I mean, for example, on your wedding day, when you're getting married in the early stages, is knew, this in your mind thinking yes, he's... Yes, I, I, I knew, like, you know... And did you ever say to him, to your husband? No. Why would you do that? Why would you stop someone living their life? That's I would never, never do that to, to anyone. That's one thing you don't do to to anyone is tell them, you know, you're going to get sick, you're going to die. You can say to them, I think you should go to the doctor, but you don't... Because even if a person only has five years left, they can fill loads into that life. And it is about living life and enjoying it, no matter what happens to our human body. But do you not feel that when you're aware of all this that it becomes a burden, that you carry the worries and the burdens. It, um, it's, it's, it's like an emotion, constant emotional it, roller coaster. It is, but... Do you not get burnt out? I don't get burnt out. My human body gets tired, but my spiritual self, my soul doesn't. And I, I suppose it is that, you know, I see the angels physically. I know God is real. I know you have a soul and, and it could be all of that of knowing and seeing physically that I keep going. Lorna Byrne and her new book is called Love from Heaven and is published by Coronet. Your thoughts on 81771 or you can call us here on 08459 555 678. That's 81771 the text or 08459 555 678. You're listening to the Saturday Magazine.